up, y'all? Thank you so much for tuning back to the JLP Network YouTube channel. It's always a pleasure to be able to encourage, challenge, and inspire you to live life to the fullest from a biblical perspective. If you've been enjoying the content thus far that we've been producing, please go ahead and subscribe to this channel. Make sure that you hit that notification bell so you would always be notified when we release new videos. And for today's video, I just want us to go ahead and read together Isaiah 50 verse 10. And I'm reading from the New International Version, Isaiah 50, verse 10. And it says, y'all, who among you fears the Lord and obeys the word of his servant? Let the one who walks in the dark, who has no light, trust in the name of the Lord and rely on their God. I'm going to read this one more time. Isaiah 50, verse 10. Who among you fears the Lord and obeys the word of his servant? Let the one who walks in the dark, who has no light, Trust in the name of the Lord and rely on their God. Hallelujah. Amen. I love this scripture. And this scripture is one of many scriptures from the Bible that truly speaks volume in regards to God's mercy toward humanity. You know, we're literally living in the last days, y'all. It's no joke. <laughs> All right, because some people, they'll be like, you know, I'm I'm not here to bring doom and gloom. But literally, we are living in the last days. We, we are seeing Bible prophecies being, uh, you know, um, fulfilled one day after another after another. But also what is also true is that God is merciful. All right. God is merciful and his arm is not too short to save. And he always gives humanity the opportunity to repent and follow him. Let's go ahead and meditate on that scripture further, right? It says, who among you fears the Lord and obeys the voice of his servant? I'm going to stop right there. So this is a question being stated. And so God around the earth, right, or around the world, he has people that he has set apart to proclaim his messages. He has people of God. For example, he has uh, Christians, right? And he has the church, the bride of Christ, which is, again, the Christian community. And within the Christian community, he has apostles, he has uh, prophets, he has pastors, he has teachers, he has evangelists. He has what we call today as the fivefold, right, ministries. And through them, and as well as through just believers in Jesus Christ, he speaks through his people to be able to evangelize to the lost, those who are in darkness, those who do not have the truth of God within them, those who perhaps are living contrary to the word of God. And he says to these people, he says, you know, do you obey the word of my servant? When he says the word of his servant, when God speaks in that manner, he knows that he's talking about the word that he has given his servant to get to them, to get to those who are blind, right? Meaning they are spiritually dead. They are spiritually dead because they don't know the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. They don't know the message of the kingdom of God. And God literally in his mercifulness, right? In his loving kindness, he says, listen to their word, right? Obey the word of my servants, right? If you walk in darkness, listen to such words so that way you you can walk in light and you can rely on their God. God is aware that there are people that are against him. There are people that practice different uh, religions, right? There are people that practice new age. There are people who believe in astrology, who again, believe in fortune telling and so forth. But yet God says, listen to the word of my servant, right? Listen to the word of the people that I have placed on the earth to be a messenger to you, to be an example to you and rely on their God, meaning rely on me. You know, the Bible tells us that, you know, God's will is for all to be saved. It is not God's will, not even for one person not to be saved. But we also know from the word of God that God has given us the power to choose. He is not a God who forces salvation upon his people, but he allows you to make that decision to choose him. And so as we're living in the end times, maybe you stumbled upon this video. Maybe you're not a Christian. You did not grow in a Christian household. Maybe this is your very first time listening to me speaking concerning God's mercy. I don't know what state you're in. I don't know what country you're in. And I don't know how you're living your life. I don't know whether uh, you believe there is a heaven or hell, but I do want you to know this. I want you to know if you need answers, life answers, such as, you know, why am I here? Where am I going? You know, what happens when I die? Where will I be when I die? I want you to pay attention to this. I want you to know that there's a God 
and there's a one and true living God and his name is Yahweh. And I want you to understand this. I want it to hit the depth of your soul that he sent his son, Jesus Christ, Though you did not know him, though you may still not know him, he sent Jesus to die in your place in order for you to be saved. Maybe you're in sin right now. Maybe you don't even know what sin is, but uh, sin is whatever it is that we do that goes against the will of God, that goes against the word of God. We know in scripture that it's a sin to have a sexual intimacy before marriage. We know that it's a sin to murder. It's a sin to steal. It's a sin to lie, right? All of these things are sin. And so we know that sin keeps us from God. It separates us from God. And so if you feel as if you're living a lifestyle that you're just doing whatever it is that you want to do, you just do whatever just pleases you because it makes you feel good. You say, hey, I'm going to do it because it makes me feel good. I'm going to do it because it makes me happy. Well, I want to tell you that you are living in sin. And the Bible lets us know that when sin is birth, it will lead to death. And many of us, though we may not have experienced death, right? But we know that we do not want to die. And often we do not want to die before our time. And a lot of people, they do not understand this, that once they die, this is that's not the end. There's two destinations. There's either a heaven, a life eternal with God where he is, or there's eternal damnation, which is hell. And it's not, again, it's not God's will to send anyone to hell. But it is through our choices and our actions that we either send ourselves to heaven or hell. If you... Give your life today to the Lord. Give your life today to Jesus. And if you listen to that, that scripture that I just read, Isaiah 50 verse 10, and if you comprehend and say, wow, my goodness, God is so merciful. You know, even though I don't know him, he's telling me he wants me to get into the light. He wants to give me light so I can see. He wants to remove me from darkness. And he wants me to listen to the messages of those who call themselves Christians, those who are set apart by God to proclaim salvation, the salvation message. Oh my goodness, that should just move you right there. That should just move you right there. And I want you to understand this, y'all. Understand this. There's no hope in this world. There's no hope in this world. And literally, there's no future either for anyone in the world apart from Christ. I know sometimes people don't want to hear that because people want to believe that there's going to be a la la land as long as they continue to believe there's going to be a la la land. But the truth, my goodness, the truth, my brothers and sisters, is that there's only hope and that there's only a future when you know Jesus, when you have declared Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I don't know what it is that they have told you, but I want to tell you this message, that this world is coming to an end, that God, he already told us through scripture, through the Bible, which is the word of God, the word of truth that he is going to destroy this, this this world, that he is coming to judge this world. And he is coming to judge this world with a righteous judgment because he sees that the, that humanity has far went against what it, what it is that is true according to God's word. He has seen that we as people, we as humans have, have defamed him, have blasphemed him over and over and over again. Yet he, yet he allowed himself, right? He allowed himself to have self-control, to not bring judgment upon the earth, to not bring judgment upon people. But God, he also is a God of justice. He is a God who is not able to lie. He can't lie. It's impossible for God to lie. It's impossible for God to lie. And so God says he is a God that cannot mock. Often people will continue to do the very thing that they're doing because they're saying, well, I heard this message of salvation that Jesus is coming soon, but yet the sun still comes out tomorrow like the Annie movie and nothing has changed and I'm still living my best life and nobody can tell me what to do. Do you know it's because of God's mercy that nothing has yet changed? It has nothing to do with the fact that there is not a God. Yes, there is a God. It's because there is a God that you are still here today, still living, still breathing. And he is so merciful, the Bible says, that he has shown goodness to those who believe in him and even to those who do not know him, even to those who betrayed him, who rejected him, who blasphemes him. And as we read just recently right there in Isaiah 50 verse 10, but yet he says to the, the people who don't know him, if you are in the darkness, right? Come to the light. Listen to the messages that I've given my servants. Obey the word of the Lord. Obey the message I've given to my servant and rely on their God, meaning rely on him, the one true and living God. Are you going through anxiety right now? Are you going to, through depression right now? 
Do you have questions that no human being can answer for you? Then my friend, I'm telling you again, God has the answer in his word and God wants you to just make up your mind today and come into his light. The light that has always existed and the light that could never grow dim. The light that could never grow dim. The light that could never puff out. This is the light that we should all be pursuing. Not the light that people think is light, right? But the light of Christ, the true life-giving light. This is the light that the scripture tells us to shine. You hear a lot of people say, arise and shine for your light has come. This is the light that is talking about the light of Christ. It has nothing to do with us. It is not a light that originated from us, but it is the light of Christ. It's the, it's the light that originated from God, the creator. He wants us to shine his light on the earth. And so I encourage you today, there's always hope but that hope is in Christ. And there is a love that is forever. And that love too is in Christ. What, what, what the world says about love, that's not love at all, y'all, honestly. What the world says about love is not love. But we know, we as believers, we know that Jesus Christ, we know that God, God Almighty, Yahweh, He is love, God is love, the God of the Bible, the God who created man humanity he is love and i want you to understand this today when you have the love of god residing within you when you have that revelation of true love who love is which is god you know that nothing in all creation could separate you from him and nothing could steal your joy nothing could steal your peace nothing could steal the light again that he has placed inside you you will notice that you no, you you no longer fear man. You no longer fear death itself. You no longer feel hard times. That you can rejoice no matter the season. And so I want you to understand this: God, He is the light again that can never be puffed out. And today, He's asking you, come to the light. You've been in darkness far too long. He's saying, come to the light. Won't you come to the light? Let me let me just go ahead and pray for you. If you have not accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life, I want you to go ahead and pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I understand that you are the light. I no longer want to be in darkness. I pray that you would fill me with your spirit, that you would forgive me of my wicked ways, that you would forgive me of my sins, that you would bless me to know you, that you would bless me to live for you, that you will bless me to live according to your ways. Today I have died to the things of this world and I have asked you to have control of my life. Come into my heart, make me new. Bless me to know it is your light that gives me light to go through the earth, to grow through my journey, to be able to live. This very day, again, I give you my life I give you my will. I ask you to have your way in me. It is in your name I pray, Jesus. Amen. I want to tell you this. Because you have made this prayer, God in his faithfulness, he will begin to speak to you. He will begin to guide you. He will begin to guide you to the right people. He will begin to reveal to you his promises, his plan for your life. But also, I want you to do this. I want you to go ahead and invest in your spiritual walk with him today. I want you to go ahead and buy a physical Bible, buy a physical Bible, whether, you know, from Amazon or from your favorite retail store and also download a virtual Bible. My favorite virtual Bible is you version, by the way, go ahead and download it from the Google uh, store app or the Apple app, right? The Apple store app and began to really search around your local community and so forth where it is that you can attend a bible believing church and also i'll go ahead and link down below my ministry website and as well as my email address you can go ahead and contact me via email and i would be greatly here to encourage you <laughs> i love saying the word greatly to just put emphasis but i wouldn't mind encouraging you and challenging you and inspiring you to live life to the fullest from a biblical perspective that is why i'm here 
honestly y'all that is why i'm here i know the very fact that i have been placed on this earth is to be able to be that sister to let you know again god is real nothing is impossible for him and that he is with you but first and foremost you have to give him your life if you give your life to the lord i want you to understand you're not losing you know your value you're gaining more you are gaining more because you're gaining eternal life you will live with him forever the things that we see in this earth is temporary y'all don't hold to the things of this earth they're temporary look at what's going on around the world chaos upon chaos upon chaos confusion you don't know what's true you don't know what's false but god he already told us through scripture he already told us through the word of god that his word is truth and that his word will never disappear his word will not return void. that his word will always stand and so i pray that you were greatly encouraged by this video and again if you enjoy this video please go ahead and click that like button make sure you subscribe to our channel by god's grace we want to go ahead and release more content for you in 2022 and y'all please go ahead and leave me a comment down below i want to go ahead and interact with you it's always a pleasure to hear from you and um remember all things are possible with christ jesus until next time peace out take care bye